When you look at various countries around the world, they've all had very different ways to deal with the crisis in the middle of the pandemic, but also post-pandemic and how quickly you reopen an economy. Who's gotten it right? I think we've seen a lot of countries in Europe get it right. Um, we were hopeful um, in Australia, but we are seeing some rollback of their restrictions because they have a new outbreak. Um, you know, Spain and France and Germany were severely affected early. Um, they're, they're now, uh, after their rollbacks, importing uh, reporting increases. So I think across the globe, we're actually seeing that until we have some other form of response, like a medical countermeasure, a vaccine, a really good therapeutic, um, we're going to have to roll back those restrictions a bit. And so if you roll back, I mean, what, reimposing restrictions or how do you communicate so that citizens kind of live their life without taking too many risks? Yeah, that communication piece is key and it is so hard. Um, the, the thing that we have to work really hard to do is to communicate the importance of why we're taking these measures. So um, the restrictions are not punitive. They're not uh, meant to harm uh, people or groups, they're really to protect everyone. And and there's a lot of work being done in the community um, engagement piece around why the restrictions are so important, why the mask wearing is so important. You can see in the U.S. where mask wearing um, has become so politically divisive when really what we need is to come together as a community to protect each other, but also to protect the vulnerable groups um, that either can't wear masks or that um, may be impacted by the virus uh, because they have to to go about and live their lives in a different way. So that, that piece around communication is absolutely critical. Um, it involves public health messaging. It involves um, working with the most affected communities to understand how they receive the messages um, in the best way possible. Lauren, the, the problem is that sometimes we, we have also, you know, conflicting messages. So in your eyes, do, do you need to wear a mask inside or also outside? If we reopen the schools in the U.S. like we have in certain countries in Europe, do, do kids still need to social distance? Like, what's the parameter that, that you think is safe? Yeah, I agree. I think the messaging has been inconsistent, but part of that is because we are learning along with everyone else about this virus and how to manage it and how to how it's impacting our lives. So the masks, for example, um, we are starting to understand a bit more about how the virus is transmitted. So uh, the mask wearing is primarily focused around how, how the um, air handling is in the situation that you're in and how dense of a population you're in. So if you're in a really crowded environment, even outside, you're probably going to want to wear a mask. With the schools, we're still learning so much about how kids interact, how kids transmit virus to each other, how they bring it home, how the teachers are affected. So the more we learn, the, the, the more we can implement safe and effective measures. But even with the schools, it all relies on reducing that community transmission to keep kids safe and, and make a space where they can go back. And that may mean closing bars, closing restaurants, things like that. So the key is that the message may change, but it all has to be founded in science and evidence, and that's what we're trying to put forward 